Hi, how are you? I'm okay. How about you? I'm very good. Uh, please tell me how to pronounce your name correctly. Um, my name is Nestle. Oh, Nestle. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Nestle. It's very nice to meet you, though. You're from Turkey? Yeah, I am from Turkey. May I ask what city, like, or what area? Um, it's in Eskisehir, you know. Oh, the Venice, the Venice of Turkey. Oh, you heard about it. Have you ever visited, you know, Turkey no. or Eskisehir? No, but I've had so many Turkish students that I feel like I know the country because they tell me a lot of things about the food, about what their cities are like. So, yeah, so I feel like I've been there even though I haven't been there. Mm. Yeah, a lot of people say that about Turkey. You know, a lot of cultural differences, like backgrounds. It's really good. You know, it, that's the right way to do it because, like, I would feel like a guest in someone else's country. So I would feel like I have to behave according to their rules. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I actually, like, I really like Canada because I like the cold climate, the cold weather. You know, you guys have maple syrup, which, you know, <laughs> I really like maple syrup. Maple syrup is good, for sure, for sure. And so is poutine and Tim Hortons coffee. Oh, you have like special kinds of coffee there? Um, Tim Horton used to be a Hamilton, Ontario hockey player. And he started a coffee chain like a chain of coffee shops and he called them to his name's tim horton so we called them tim hortons and uh he died i can't remember exactly i think he was ill and uh, he passed away but tim hortons is is very famous they even have tim hortons in delhi india and other places in the world yeah it's quite a famous mm. coffee shop. not as famous as starbucks but it tastes better than starbucks in my opinion yeah. Oh, I would have to try that for sure. I'll keep it in mind. Yeah. Have you been to Canada? No, but I really want to go to Canada. I actually like kind of want to live in Canada, but I, I don't really do well in cold climates. Like I'm a sea kind of girl. I have to go to swim, like wear tank tops and stuff like that. I really yeah. don't know because uh, I actually checked like the um, weather forecast. And the city that I live in right now has a colder weather than Canada, literally. Well, like, so I guess it doesn't even matter. Yeah, I've heard that central Turkey has really cold weather and even snow in that in the winter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, we do have really warm weather in the summer. You can definitely go swimming. We have beautiful beaches in Ontario, especially uh, Manitoba. So the summer, I, I wouldn't recommend you go in the winter, but the summer is, is really beautiful. And so is the fall when the leaves are changing and uh, maple syrup time in Canada. Yeah, it's maple. on your country flag, the, the you know, <laughs> the leaves. Yeah, yeah. Well, right now I'm hearing perfectly spoken English. To be very honest with you, you have a nice voice. It's quite clear. Um, maybe there's a couple grammar mistakes that you've made, but certainly nothing major at all. You're definitely an, an upper intermediate speaker. Very, very uh, good English level. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, I, I've been learning English like all my life, basically. Ever since I was 11 or 12, I actually got into it um, with video games. You know, I really like playing video games and there there was some stuff uh, there were things on there that i couldn't really understand in in order to play the game you have to understand what they're saying so mm -hmm. i just you know whipped out a dictionary and it, it progressed on from there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how do you keep the english level up like do you um, immerse yourself in english during the day or do you have friends that also speak english that you hang out with and talk to or how do you keep your level yeah, I, um, I'm actually a languager, like there's different um, departments in high school that you can choose, and I chose language, which special, specializes in English. And from there, I 
went on to study English language teaching. It's a university program. So I'm really like um, familiar with English, but I, I've had plenty of friends like friends from abroad who I've been talking to and I can practice my English with. And I've been abroad a couple of times. So, you know, but most of the media that I consume is like American media and English media. So all the songs that I listen to are in English. You know, English is pretty much um, integrated with my life. I even think in English. I have to ask you, though, who are some of your favorite singers? Like, what type of uh, music do you like? Do you like some of the Canadian artists, like The Weeknd? Or I actually don't. I don't think I know any Canadian artists, really. I don't, like, most, most of the singers I know are American. But my Gen Z is going to pop out here, but I really like Melanie Martinez. Have you heard of her? I have not, but she sounds like Hispanic. She sounds like a Latino Yeah, singer. She's, she is of Hispanic descent, but mm -hmm. she's American and she makes really good songs. Um, I can't really think of anyone right now, but like everyone I listen to is probably American. Okay. That no sounds Justin, weird no right Justin now. No Justin Bieber but... for you then? No Justin Bieber for you or... Yeah, oh, no. Brian Adams is probably I don't way think I've ever time. liked Justin Bieber. <laughs> no, like One Direction, Justin Bieber, even in 2012, they just weren't it for me. I didn't yeah. really listen to them. Yeah, well, as you can tell, I'm quite a bit older than you are. Um, I think I fit into what they call the baby boomer generation. <laughs> so. Oh, really? Yes, really, yeah. Well, I mean, it's a clash of generations in here, you know? Yeah. <laughs> People... Like, Gen Z is really skeptical of, like, the boomer generation. You know, I, I'm sure you've heard of. <laughs> no, what? I'm sure you've heard of something. So tell me about Canada. Like, do you have any customs in Canada that you practice, you know, maybe a holiday? Or let me ask you, like, since you, since you have experience with Turkish people and Turkish students, is there anything that you find about Turkey that's like interesting to you in regards of culture? I think the most interesting thing that I find with um, Turkish students is just the love of food that is totally integrated yeah. in the hospitality. And also the, I find Turkish people are very, um, community more they're more broad than just family although they're family orientated for sure but I find they also are very welcoming as seeing a community more at large in Canada we are a little bit more individualistic for sure we tend to be more insular into families more in close friends and that and co-workers we're not as so much community oriented and Part of the reason is we're much more mobile, I think, than people in other countries. It's not unusual for people in Canada to move many times or to even have many different jobs in their life. So I think mm. our mobility makes it harder for to be part of a community like uh, that still exists in some countries. I think that's interesting to hear because I heard a lot of stereotypes about Canadian people being like really welcoming and friendly and, you know, you know apologizing about everything. Yeah, so it's do. interesting to hear that. Yeah, we do. We, we say sorry all the time. It's, you can oh, yeah. can't even. And I noticed can't... you have a Canadian accent, you know, a boot and sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and a, I, I love it. it. It's so, it's so cute. But we are very welcoming and accepting. It's just we don't have the same sense of community orientation that exists in some uh, countries. Like if you're in Canada and you walk up to somebody and you're lost or you're hurt, somebody is going to help you. In some countries, they'll, they might you know, just have to ignore you because they're afraid of you or something. But no, in Canada, we are very welcoming because we're so multicultural. Mm -hmm. We cannot be unwelcoming or judgmental or that because our next door neighbors and our coworkers come from all around the world. We're not a, a more of a one culture like like in Japan or in some countries. 
there's not as much uh, mixture of cultures. In Canada, we're, we're totally multicultural. You can find people from probably every country in the world live in Canada, probably every country in the world. But it's really great to hear that because like in Turkey and in other Middle Eastern countries, a lot of people have to seem like they just have the notion that if you're in Europe or someone else, like somewhere, someone, uh, somewhere else in the world, people just won't help you if you're bleeding out on the side of the street. Like mm -hmm. it's um, a pre a prejudice thing that people have. Yeah, I can, I can almost guarantee you. I cannot even, yeah, even somebody on the street, living on the street that's homeless or maybe drug addicted, even they, if they see something happening, and I know this from experience, they will come and get somebody to help you. They're, people in Canada just are, they're kind. I, I really do believe that they're quite kind and they're helpful right across the board. I think it's just part of the identity of being in Canada. Mm -hmm. you do it's just I think it's just natural like I, I would be shocked if you were in a, a street in Canada and all of a sudden you pretended to faint or fall I guarantee you somebody will come to help you oh that's really guarantee great you. to hear mm -hmm. but I think also in Turkey I think also in your country too you're not going to just let somebody fall and not try oh, to definitely them. not yeah. <clears throat> definitely definitely not um like you said we have like a lot of um we are really tribalistic w when it comes to helping people and hospitality like if mm -hmm. you were to go visit a turkish household um they would treat you like a king like or a queen like they're just going to stuff you with food and make sure you're well fed and you're gonna like gain a few click kilograms Wait, yeah. do you use the imperial system in Canada or the metric we system? Do. Yeah, we do. Uh, quite a few years ago, we uh, adapted the um, metric system because the United mm -hmm. States, um, is, the United States, I think, still uses, I don't know, I can't remember the story now, but we use kilograms and centimeters and, yeah, I can't remember why we, I thought it was something to do with the United States. I'm not exactly sure, so I'll be quiet. <laughs> All I think right. It has well, nothing to do with the United States. That's good to hear because the imperial system never made sense to me. Like people are just saying, "Oh, oh I'm five foot ten and I'm like, "What are you talking about? I don't know what that means." I still use it because of my age. Because when I went to school, we were taught with the imperial system, so I still usually say my height or my weight in pounds and, and feet in inches. Yeah. Right. And I think because American is really integrated with my English and, you know, my um, culture now, I actually use it without noticing. I go like, oh, it, it must be miles long or I'm five foot nine, stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. All right, let me just finish up by asking. So you have a lot of experience with Turkish people and Turkish learners of English, right? Yeah, I think a fair amount. Yeah, I would say, yeah. So what would you recommend to Turkish people who want to learn English? Because there are so many differences in Turkish and English. So how would you recommend that they learn English? Okay, so... Um, basically, there's a lot of things that they can do, but it also really depends on the person because everybody is an individual, right? What works for one person might not work for another person. Try as much as possible, immerse yourself in the language. Try to listen to, watch, talk to foreigners, talk to expats when you see them. Just try and make every effort you can to, to speak, and to listen to English, um, even to use chat bots. I know that there's a lot of controversy around them and fear that they're going to take teachers' jobs away. They're not. They're a tool like everything else. So if talking to a chat bot helps you to gain confidence in English, then do it. If um, you like to learn by listening to YouTube short little videos or maybe TikTok videos, then do it, whatever works for you. I think the key, though, is 
not to give up. It will get easier and immerse yourself as much as possible in the language that you want to learn. Right. A lot of people, you know, give up because it's too hard to talk to another person who doesn't understand you. And it's hard for Turkish people to improve their speaking abilities because like Turkish and English are phonetically so different. And so like maybe they should, you know, try to push themselves and get out of their comfort zone. Oh, my God. It's just disaster upon disaster. It's all right. I'm just talking about like how cute your accent is. I love the Canadian accent. Thank you for that. Thank you. And it's been absolutely lovely talking to you. Your English is really so good. 